it is about to be Christmas time, so I've dressed appropriately. And in a tradition that I'm sure predates my existence, my family has always made spritz cookies at Christmas time. And I swear that there's some physics here in a minute. Spritz cookies are a German like butter cookie that is made by extruding dough through a press into these like sort of shaped extrusion plates. So you get really tiny cookies that are basically shaped like whatever's on this plate. The only real problem with them is that they're small enough you can kind of eat them like popcorn, not just for breakfast anymore. Did I mention that they're mostly made of butter? Seeing as this is the first year that I'm not going to be home for Christmas, I was not about to let this tradition slide. And seeing how this is my first Christmas with a 3D printer, I decided that I was going to try to make some of my own extrusion plates. My first attempt at this was yesterday, and cookies go really fast in a house of grad students. And I basically just pasted my logo onto a block of PLA and tried to make cookies through it. You can see that it didn't really work. And later I realized that this was a surprisingly complicated physics problem. Of course, what thing in reality could be as simple as you wanted it to be? When you extrude dough through a cookie press, you want to have a similar amount of dough pass through each hole in the template relative to the area of that hole. If you look at a simple plate with one hole twice as wide as the other, you might expect to get four times the dough out of it. If the dough flux scaled linearly with hole area, but it doesn't. You have to deal with shear. The dough right near the edges of the hole actually experiences drag as it's moving against the walls of the hole, slowing it down, while the dough in the middle, which is only touching other dough, can move much faster. That means that if you have a slight imbalance in hole size, you can get a much larger imbalance in dough extrusion. Clearly, such an unstable system makes cookie design very difficult. In my case, extruding through the Alpha Phoenix logo produced way too much dough at the Phoenix, because while the flames and the wings and the tail all had similar spacings between walls, dough passing through the body of the Phoenix never actually touched a wall, it was just surrounded by other dough, making that part flow much faster, and producing some extremely lopsided Alpha logos that mostly wouldn't even stick to the sheet, so clearly optimization was necessary. So I returned to Illustrator, opened up my Alpha Phoenix logo, and sort of bloated out all of the flames, the tail of the phoenix, and crunched in the form a bit around the phoenix's body. I also decided that despite worrying about the plastic cracking, I only wanted to make this form 2 millimeters thick instead of 3 millimeters thick, which should reduce the drag shear forces just a little bit and make the dough flow more evenly. Once complete, I also hit it with a heat gun and sanded down the top and thoroughly washed the plate with soap, lest I get little stringers of plastic and plastic powder in the cookies. This is also a good time to mention that I was using a brass nozzle and I wasn't using food grade PLA for this, so I cannot explicitly recommend that somebody repeat these steps if they want to produce their own spritz cookie extrusion plates. But for very brief use at home, I'm going to stick with my janky method. If you have reasonable mixing beaters, this takes like five minutes, but unfortunately our mixer has ends that fall out all the time, which is just a pain. I think they're supposed to be parallel at the very least. <laughs> it also only has two speeds, off and hyperdrive. So I decreased the maximum speed by running it through my dimmer switch that's appeared in a few videos before. Oh yeah, control. Oh. I feel like I need safety glasses for this thing. Eventually, you end up with a thick dough that you can load into the press. And now, the moment of truth, push it through the printed extrusion plate. Oh, oh, it's so close. Darn it. <laughs> I got one. I got one that worked. 
Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I broke I broke the plastic. Look at that. It's all uh, okay. bowed out. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, so that's the problem. A lot of stress on uh, it. Needs to, it needs to be three millimeters right thick. Yeah. And I think that the whole thing needs to be shrunk. Hey, look at that! Oh shit. That's an alpha. Phoenix cookie. Oh my god, it's working! Yay! <laughs> Liberally apply colored sugar on top, bake for like six to ten minutes on an aluminum pan, and don't let them get brown anywhere, lest they get too crumbly. I believe that uh, this this level of experimentation <laughs> requires filming. Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to Brian's YouTube channel. <laughs> Put some, have it be a top down shot and see if anyone notices like this. <laughs> <laughs> that it's suddenly a different pair of hands. My fingertips have chocolate on them. Yeah. So there's a chocolate print on like everyone. That's not that one. Not that one. <laughs> So would you would you refer to these as a success? So spritz cookies are always good, but now I can endorse the chocolate back technique as being truly addictive. And if you are trying to make custom shaped spritz cookies, pay attention to the size and spacing of the holes in your printed or laser cut part, because shear forces on cookie dough are no joke. I was never anticipating making a video at any point in my life about hydrodynamic forces on cookie dough, but there really is physics everywhere, and if we can recognize that physics, then we can leverage it to do great things, like make tasty cookies. It's not quite Christmas yet, I guess, but if this video does go up today the way I'm planning, then happy solstice, I guess. Uh, I hope that you saw the conjunction at sunset. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next year.